Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos and place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 14 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Phi Haroth, between Migol and the sea, Red Sea. Over against Baal Zephyr. Behold, it shall, uh, before, behold, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, Egypt. The wilderness has shut them in, the geographical area. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, not done with Pharaoh, and he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh, upon all the hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. It don't sound like the sea reads to me. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Serving. And he made ready his chariot. And took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots. And all the chariots of Egypt. And the captains over every one of them. Israel has no weapons. Is he going to go kill them or is he going to go bring them back? He's got this fierce army. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. Victory. You know, you put your hand up high. They usually get that full number one. It's a high salute. You've seen pictures of it in war films. You know, they're riding, the, the guy's riding the tank, he's got his hand up. People don't know why they do things they do. But the Egyptians pursued after them. All the horses, chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them encamping by the sea, the Red Sea, besides pi Harath, before baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, next chapter we'll be getting to why I am expressing that, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dwelt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Unbelief. They've forgotten what God has done for them already. And we're the same. 
Is not this the word that we did tell in Egypt? Saying, let us alone. Let us alone. Leave me alone. Get out of here. That we may serve the Egyptians. Really? I thought you were crying under God of the hardship. I thought you were relieved when the, when the king of Egypt died. I thought you were happy when Moses said, God's visit, you guys. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he, God, shall show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, there they are, there they come, there they are. No question about it, here they come, and they're marching. And they got their arrows, and they probably got their bow and arrows. They got their armor on. No question about it, here they come. And most times they're dressed as your family, as your friends, as your co-workers. They want you back. They think you freaked out. They think you joined some occult. Ye shall see them again no more forever. Now Moses is speaking not by but God. <laughs> Moses is, they're at the Red Sea. He's got one camp of people, all now they're mad at him. And he's got another keep of camp of people, now they're mad at us. <laughs> Moses is all by himself. The Lord shall fight for you, and he shall hold your peace. Okay, that sounds good. Stand still. We're going to kick their butt. Really? They see the best of Pharaoh's army. They see the best of the army. They know who the Egyptians are. They know who are the elite. They know by what they're wearing. Is it a parade or are they going into battle? And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? What are you doing crying unto me for? <laughs> uh, God, uh, you must be blind because there's an army coming right now. Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Oh, God. God, there's a C here. Go. Um, we can't. We are on the shore of this sea. It is a large sea. That if you look at your map, God, God, open up your Bible. Take out your Bible map. We are not in the Sea of Reeds. To the east of us, no, to the west of east, yeah. Right. To the east of us is a great body of water. Now, to the west of us is a great body of soldiers. We are entangled in the land, God. This is the way you told us. We've got a different GPS malfunction here, and there's no way for us to do a U turn. Don't you see the impossibilities of God right here? Now, don't you see Jesus Christ? A man, he's got a withered hand. Jesus walks up to him and says, Stretch forth thy hand. Um, um, take thy bed, get up and take thy bed and walk away. Uh, 
Peter and John even. They're at the temple. They pick this guy up. He's he's, he's got. He's got bad ankles. He's never walked a day in his life. All right, stand up. Um, and do you know what your first mark as a Christian is when God says to do something and you can't? You stand at that situation like, uh, uh, oh, Lord. And at that moment, you got God, you got to do something. God, even in a Christian life, you must do that impossible thing that I can't without you. If Israel were to kick Egypt's butt right now, Israel would say, hey, we did it. Look how great we are. God can't do that. Moses has opened up his mouth in verse 13. And ye shall see them again no more forever. Moses has really put himself in a situation here because he just told Israel they're going to be gone. Wherefore cries unto me, uh, we're in trouble, Lord. Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Now, that's not a period. But, see, God realizes what he just told Moses. But hold on. But lift thou up thy rod. And imagine Moses now looking. Oh yeah. The rod of God. I forgot about you. Okay, what am I going to do with the rod of God now with an army? And a bunch of people are angry with me. What are you going to do now? Please don't turn into a snake. Please don't turn into a snake. Please don't turn into a snake. And stretch out thy hand over the sea. And divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. I don't care if Moses and Israel were there for 200,000 years. They, Moses would have never gotten that idea. The impossibility of having a cane and be able to go across the sea. It's never been done. And it's going to be done before again in Israel's history. Isn't that interesting? It's going to be done with the Jordan River. But right now. Uh, and haven't you ever been in the walk of God. And God said I want you to do something. And you look at the possibility. And there is no possibility. But go. I remember the first day I street priest. But lift up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. The children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now look at the impossibilities there. That'd be like me standing here at the beach at Daytona Beach, Florida, and God said, I want you to go to Africa. Uh, yeah, right. Stretch out thy hand, the Atlantic Ocean is going to divide itself, and you're going to go on the, on the ocean floor dry. Oh, okay, really. And I, God, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. Well, that's good news, Lord. You want to part the river, I mean the, the, the sea, and then you want them to follow us. Great idea, God. Really? Yeah. How long is this going to happen? And they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, the army, and his chariots, the army, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh. Upon his chariots, upon his horsemen. How will the Egyptians know that he is the Lord? They will wake up in hell. 
The next step for the Egyptian army and for Pharaoh, they will be in the lake of fire in hell. They'll be burning. They are there today, and they know that God's righteous. Pharaoh knows today the God that he did not know. He knows that God today, and he'll know him for all eternity. He'll stand before that God at the great white throne judgment. Kind of too late, isn't it? And there are people that we know and people that we love. They know God is God today because they are in hell. I could probably write down names on a piece of paper, my family member. I know without a shadow of doubt they're probably there today. And you know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. They know much more about God than I do. And the man that is in hell said, go tell my family about this place. How's that? That's kind of a statement there. I mean, we could just stop right now and leave it like that. They shall know I am the Lord because they're going to go to hell today. According to this story. They die by drowning and yet they'll never get a drop of water to cool their tongue. And the moment that they open their eyes, the gospel, the moment they open their eyes and play, that's God. And he's not here and he's never going to be here. And they, and they, and they, unlike me yet. They will see Jesus Christ come into hell, deposit our sins, get a message by Jesus Christ. They will sit down, the Bible says that Jesus preached to them in hell. And watch Jesus walk out and they will know about the Son of God. That's why you go all the world and preach the gospel. That's why you give out gospel tracts. That's a very powerful statement, verse 17. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 18. And I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh. Pharaoh will proclaim Jesus Christ is Lord. Upon his chariots, upon his horsemen. And the angel of God went before him. The camp of Israel, I got Zechariah 12, 8, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Now, that's not a terror to the Israelites right now. Why did that cloud that has been following, uh, that we've been following, why is that cloud now over there? God has gotten behind us. God should be going before us. Remember, they were afraid. Verses 11, 12, and 13. When that cloud was over there. Now that cloud's back there. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. It was a cloud and darkness to them, Egyptians. But it gave light by night to thee, these, so that the one came not near the other all that night. Now, isn't that interesting? Egypt couldn't come to Israel, and Israel couldn't go to Egypt. There are some people trying to. And to the Egyptians, it was darkness again. To the Israelites, it's light. Go on. Move on. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind. All that night, it got dark. So we're looking at the first 24 hours. At midnight, the firstborn were killed. Get out of here. Now it's getting dark again. 
and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. And I guarantee when it said dry, there was no puddles. Wide enough to have the entire nation of Israel go forward. It was a wall of water, and Paul tells us that it actually went over their head. Paul will describe this as your baptism after you got out of Egypt. You're saved, you're out of the world, you are God's child. Next thing is you get baptized. Here's the baptism to the Red Sea. And can you just see the children walking there, sticking their, their sticks in the wall, calm water and all. Come on, let's go, let's go, hurry, get out before this thing closes on us. We all fear God. And people walking there looking like, wow, you know, the fish are looking at you like, I didn't know this was an aquarium. Who are those people? And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground. That's a contradiction. That's a contradiction. Went through the sea on dry ground. There is no dry ground in a sea. Do you see the possibilities that God can do for his loved ones? That love them and trust in him? And the warriors were a wall unto them on this side, on their right hand, and on their left hand. You would picture that as an aquarium. And no Egyptians saw what just happened. The darkness to them. And I wonder, did it make a sound? Like the tide going away? Was it was it fierce? Or was it just Okay, Moses, you can go now. Wow. Okay. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. They're still going. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. There they go. There's no second thinking. Israel's doing it, I'm doing it. That's religion. We got the same Bible. We got the same God. We go to church like you. But there's one difference. And it came to pass that in the morning watch. It's morning now. It's coming upon 6 a.m. Jewish time. 6 a.m. the previous 24 hours. They were preparing and killing the lamb. Getting ready. To put the blood on the door. At midnight the destroyer will come. At midnight here. The redeemer has come. There's no death for Israel. Again. Oh but there will be death for the Egyptians. And if I sneeze forgive me. It came to pass that in the morning watch. The Lord looked. In unto the host of the Egyptians. Through the pillar of fire and of the cloud. God's in that cloud. Oh, I see you guys. Hi. <laughs> That's not Ra. That's not Horus. That's not Isis. Who is that? What God is that? I don't know. I know, Pharaoh. You don't know who he is, do you? But when God pokes his face at the rapture, they, there he is. There he is. And troubled the host of the Egyptians. God showed himself to the Egyptians. Now they're in trouble. They've gone too far into the sea. And took off their chariot wheels. Good going, God. They're not going to go anywhere. They're rushing after Israel. Oh, there goes one tire. And there's tires going everywhere. Isn't God so great? 
Can you imagine the fear that they dragged them heavily? The tires are falling off, but they're still telling the horses to go. So that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. Okay, let's say it. We're done. Let's get out of here. You can't. You ain't got no more wheels, idiot. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. You finally learned that? <laughs> you have finally got that lesson? You got this mountain of sea all around you. This is not the moment to, to get to know God. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians. Or we'll baptize them with death. They're not coming out of this baptism. They're going to die. And they already said, let us flee. This is the God that defends the Israelites. We had a guy today. Oh, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. You don't believe in enough. You haven't put your heart into it. These people have made the same proclamation. And they're going to die. And they're going to be in hell. Because it's not hard. It's not repentance. You can say you know God all you want. Like they are. And come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea. And the sea returned to his strength. Oh, look at that. Bodies of water are male. His strength. Then the morning appeared, 6 a.m. The sun comes up, and the sea is back to where it was. Isn't that an interesting thing? And the waves are crashing. And Israel is on the other side. And they turn around, where's the Egyptians? And the Egyptians fled against it. They're trying to get out. They're, they're running. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, they now know who God is. They're in hell. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea. After them, there remained not so much as one of them, including Pharaoh. We'll see that later. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on the left hand. Wall of water. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And of Israel saw that the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Bodies are washing up. Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and believed the Lord, and his servant Moses. Oh, and only stop right there. But take into account that they believed the Lord. <laughs> That's important. For those that did not believe the Lord, are washing up on the shore. Hallelujah. And we'll break in the next chapter when Lord willing.